Hi there, I'm Brenna Trisha, it's me and Jenny, it's time for another not naked video response to a church book, a series, the naked truth, where your dog is candidly and as truthfully as possible by the subject of the using drain out the shower, no makeup, absolutely soaking wet hair, like honestly. <laughs> um, first take, one take, um, most people choose to do it naked, or I don't know if I'm the only one who still does this, Trisha chooses to do this naked, and I choose to do it in my jammies, because I wouldn't wear my jammies outside, and I wouldn't go naked outside, unless it's in a very specific circumstance or two, um, but there we go, um, I can't think of any off the top of my head, anyway, ramble times, ha ha ha, uh, either way, it's not a sexy time thing, despite it being a wet t-shirt contest for me right now, um, it's more of a tool for the blogger to be vulnerable and honest, their real self, and to know that that is enough, no matter what other people say about your appearance, or what you should or shouldn't wear, or how you should present yourself. And I'm trying a different setup. Hey, look, I've still got my Keep Calm Carry On poster back there, but I've also got my fairy lights, and it's mostly because um, in order to get the right angle on my web camera, which is what I'm using, I had to stack my laptop on top of about five pillows and then place it on the end of my bed and hope that my laptop didn't fall off so I decided to keep it to the desk. Um, there we go. Um, and as you can probably tell this is going to be a rambler. This is going to be a rambler so thank you to anyone who's watching right now. Um, I would recommend if you want to carry on listening to put me on in a different tab and not actually watch my face because I've got the feeling this one might go on for a while. Um, yeah. Um, Anyway, I don't know if I'm the only one who does this still. I don't know if anyone's going to watch this, but mostly this is for me to communicate, um, which is actually, I, I have a big long list because this week's theme was AMA. Um, so Trisha got a lot of questions, it was live chat, um, and I don't do live chats because I don't think enough people would watch me. <laughs> um, and it would just be me like doing what I do on Twitch, but without the entertainment of actually having a video game to comment on, um, or the people are hanging out with me on Twitch. This is rambly. Um, but yes, basically I was like, there's no point in me doing a live show because not enough people would turn out for it to be a conversation. It would just be me talking to myself, which is what I'm doing now anyway. But the subjects have been chosen. So um, I've written a long list of subjects that were discussed um, and I'm just gonna respond to them as we go. And I've kind of already tippled into the first one, which was, um, God, my hair is so wet, so wet. Um, the first one was connection finding a connection in this time of lack of connection um and yeah I definitely in terms of this I kind of feel like for me there I think there are one or two people who watch my youtube channel who don't watch my twitch and obviously there's a good number of people who watch my twitch or a couple of people who watch my twitch who might not watch my youtube I don't know um and whether or not I know them in person or not for me particularly naked truth and what I found with twitch um, is that uh, it gets me out of my own brain space and lets me just spew thoughts out into the world so then the people I live with don't have to pop up with a continual like because I'm not leaving the house so instead of it being like you know I'm splitting conversation with colleagues and with friends and you know customers and clients and all the things in between I'm just talking to two people <laughs> And that's tiring for them, and I think it's tiring for them particularly. Like, I, I just, I like being able to get my, my thinking and my words out um, to a unjudgmental, mostly, um, place. Um, even if that place is a public forum, technically, so I could get some people being like, no, no. Um, but for me, I find it, it's helpful for my connections with people I'm living with to get out some of my connections with other people um and I think some people I do know IRL do occasionally watch these um but yeah I found on the other side Twitch definitely helps me feel like I'm being sociable it feels like it's me just playing games but it also feels like my social life right now um which is why I can justify doing it as much as I do um but uh in terms of my social life I mean I'm, I'm a big introvert um I've, I've definitely found that what little sociability I have has seriously atrophied um since I've gone into lockdown in that like the few times I've had to interact with someone that I don't know very well um, in person, which has been the guy who changed my car tire and the lady at the Airbnb that me and my sisters stayed at this weekend. Um, like having conversations with people is so hard again. It's so hard. Um, and I'm sure like it won't be hard once I'm back to work and I'm talking to my colleagues again, but like it's, it's just a weird type of exhausting for me now. Um, and I'm sure like it won't take long to get that kind of, energy back um but it definitely feels weird at the moment where I'm like 
talking to people outside of kind of a space which I can control or people that I know very well it's very weird at the moment um and other than that the only people I've talked to are like my D&D friends and one or two friends online which are most of my friends anyway because I I, I would prefer to have a group of very close-knit friends um who I get on very well with and to know everyone um but I definitely feel like that connection like D D is a saving grace once a week wednesdays is my D D night and i talk to my friends and it's great and i need that um uh but i definitely i feel like i should be trying more to connect but this is what i do anyway um da, 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 da. um one of the subjects that came up was like Again, I'm running from my notes. It's been a couple of days since I've watched this. Um, so caring versus not caring versus looking away um, in terms of situations. Um, and yeah, it's definitely... I, I think the question was whether or not you care more what people say or do as you've gotten older. I think that was the question. Um, and I've always been a big old... Uh, believer in eccentricity, um, you being you for the sake of you being you, um, you making the choices that work for you regardless of what society tells you to do. Um, uh, and that that's something that I've always kind of believed in, like the concept, like eccentric, eccentric people is what I view as people who do something that is entirely bonkers out of context. But as soon as you actually break down their reasoning, you're like, oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. That's not socially normal, but it makes sense. Like my classic example is when I finish work, I will walk to my car with a china cup from work like a mug um, because I can't be bothered to get a carry cup. What's the point in having a carry cup when I can walk to my car with a china mug, put it in my car and next day bring it back? I used to do it to the bus stop as well. I used to walk to the bus stop when I, when I wasn't driving, walk to a bus stop with a china cup, put it in my bag when I got to the bus stop after I finished it and then take it back to work the next day or wash it up at home and then bring it with me on the bus stop in the morning like that sort of like I I don't care about little things like that um when it comes to the big life world blah, um caring versus not caring um I definitely I feel like I care more but I also feel like I understand myself better to know when it's good to look away um and that's not to say i'm looking away looking away but there is only so much um emotional weight you can digest at one time um and trying to balance how and when you digest big events is something that you can learn with adulthood um there are things that i care about a lot um that's happening in the world um, and there's a lot of things that make me angry and upset and heartbroken in the world. Um, but equally, there's a certain point where I need to step away and do other things and have life. Um, and that is a privilege that I know a lot of people don't have. Um, but yeah, um, caring versus not caring, specifically to do with how people treat me or others. Um, I do like... I feel like I care more if someone else, like Trisha was saying, I care more if someone else that I know and love is being hurt by others. Um, but equally, like there's sometimes when it like, if someone says something mean to me, like I think that's one of the things that changes with adulthood. With children, children say mean things to each other and so you have to confront it. While with me as an adult, very rarely do things happen directly to your face so it's assumption or confusion or miscommunication or um, a whole plethora of reasons why someone has done something. So it's hard to interpret ill will unless it's objectively evil, in which case you can be like, well, screw you, off you go. But a lot of the time with actual real life day-to-day -day social interaction, like it's hard to know if something is deliberate. And so quite a lot of the time I digest that as you know, they don't mean to be mean, let's move on. Um, so I don't care too much about things that happen to me, but the, if, if someone were to do something actively mean, then I probably would care. Um, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, um, One of the other, like, caring versus not caring in terms of aesthetic and, like, dyeing your hair. Um, so um, you can't see it at all in this light because it's, it's evening and my hair's wet. It's got a little bit of purple in the bottom of my hair. Um, so... 
I am very torn on aesthetic and that's more of a struggle than caring or not caring about how I look. Um, so my aesthetic um, changes a lot. I'm constantly torn between like, again, the eccentric, um, alternative, um, extra side of myself and the basic cream carpet type person like the cream carpet versus the eccentric is constantly a battle in between my brain where half of me wants to always wear like mum jeans and nice sensible neutral coloured clothing and shirts and cardigans and to have cream walls and all matching furnishings and um like really really basic things like I want like just everything to be matching and coordinated and um to all of that side of thing and then the other side of me is like no I want a fairy grove in the corner of my garden and I want a room that's like elf themed and I want like a I want to have my gothic subset where I, I like you know go out to I don't know steampunk conventions and like go to um LARPs and all of that sort of thing and I want to have like nerdy goodies strewn across my room but then the other half of me is like but you've got to then dust those things and they're terrible for the environment to buy bad for the environment plastic and um the other thing like the other part of it that's kind of hovering in the middle is the why would I buy that when I can make it type thought process where I'm like well I could buy myself a cool goblet which would be awesome and then the the Cream cops had a bit because no 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 you can't afford it don't afford it it'll be a waste of money you'll never use it and you have to clean it and the part of me in the middle is like well maybe if I made it and that would be an experience that'll be something I'm good at and the cream cart side of me is like but you won't make it so good and the um <laughs> the aesthetic side is like but you won't make it how you want it and then what if you need to match it with something else of a different theme Dwah! my brain is a mess but in terms of um, specifically hair, yeah, going back to the subject, oh my god, I'm only on part two of like 30, we're 12 minutes in, oh Jesus, I hope no one watches this, it's gonna be ridiculous. So part of me wants to dress like a Victorian all the time and wear like my hair long and natural um, and have no aesthetic colours whatsoever and dress like a Victorian um, and be like, like full on like Edwardian clothes and Edwardian shoes and big buns which is what I really like um and like kind of slightly traditional earrings um and then the part of me wants to just have a straight ponytail and just be in a bun so it's nice and neat and away and then part of me wants to be like a 1950s housewife and so like I really like having purple tips it feels really nice and exciting but the thing that I'm struggling at the moment is uh, my hair's starting to get to the point now where it's long enough that I might donate it again um, which means I can't have coloured hair which means I need to grow out or let the colouring completely fade part of me is like but I really like pink hair anyway <sighs> that was a lot of talking for a very small subject um, Da, 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 da. Uh, finding joy henry cavill's video um and uh yeah it was, it was pretty cool pretty cool pretty cool um and uh, i said it in my twitch stream today actually it's one of those weird things where i can understand a little bit why gatekeeping happens because at some point we're like henry cavill you are handsome and talented and buff and um smart and have a great accent and you are hollywood a-list and you're rich why do you have to take our nerd stuff as well? <laughs> but also part of me, I'm like, is welcome, come one of us, join us, be one of us nerds, let us be, be our nerd army. So it was awesome. And like finding joy, particularly this time is really important. Finding something that makes you go, oh, that's amazing. Like the Scott Pilgrim um, conversation script reading was magic. I started, I was like, I'll just click on that. Like last night when I was just like starting to doze off and I was literally, laughing my butt off in my bed at like 2am and I was like I'll finish it in a moment and then I was like another sink and more I was like oh, that's amazing so finding joy particularly in this time no matter what it may be is worth it um do you prefer summer or winter was a question that came up um I'm very much a transitional season person I like autumn because Halloween um the turning of the leaves and particularly after a very hot summer it's nice to get cooler equally I like spring where after a particularly cold winter it's nice to see daylight because we don't we, we don't get daylight in the winter. It's like, it's dark by like 3.30. It's ridiculous. Um, 
but I suppose if I had to choose one, I, I really don't know because I hate being over hot. I really hate being sunburnt and being sweaty and uncomfortable and unable to get cold. And I do like snuggling up when it's cold with lots and lots of layers and a hot chocolate and a pot of tea and just being absolutely cocooned. Um, but either way, I just feel like both situations, you can't really do what you want to do. You can't really function at a normal level. Um, so... I guess winter, because you can always put on layers if you're cold, um, but it's hard to cool down once you're really hot. I suppose it swimming pools. Ah! Um, <laughs> seasons. I'm, I'm glad for the... Let's go with... I'm glad for the change of the seasons. I think if it was always one of any of the seasons, I'd be like, no, no, I've got to move. Um, sports and football. Um, I don't really follow football. I'm kind of like Trish in that I don't really follow football, but if, like, England... Uh, like, British football. I don't follow American football. At all. If England are like in the World Cup, I will watch a match or two, but that's pretty much it. I'm more like to watch rugby, um, but I'm not like an avid follower. My dad's a bit more of a fan, and I'll be like, okay, yay, go bath, um, or go Exeter. Whoever's in the whoever's in the uh, whoever's in the playlist that we happen to be um, watching for. Um, COVID update, masks, um, vaccine, etc. Uh, I can't read my own handwriting. I have a mask. I have it by my bedstead. I haven't gone out, so I haven't worn it because, you know, I haven't gone anywhere um, apart from this weekend um, where I wore it in the shops. Um, but yeah, uh, wear masks. Wear masks, guys. It just makes sense. There was a brilliant cartoon I was telling this to my parents um, today where uh, it's, uh, imagine two blokes walking down the street and neither of them are wearing trousers or boxes and one of them decides to pee on the other. Both of them are now covered in pee. That is unpleasant. Now imagine that you are wearing trousers and boxes and the man with no trousers or boxes decides to pee on you. You have pee on you, but it's less. Now imagine that he is also wearing trousers and boxes and decides to pee on you. He is covered in pee, you are not. That is why you wear masks. Um, and I found that to be delightful and very humorous. Um, uh, in terms of um, vaccines, I'm glad that there's finally some output coming from that vaccine group. Uh, both me and my sister uh, are on the vaccine trial on slightly different tiers, um, and I'm glad that results are happening. Um, and it's going to be so weird going back to real life when that happens. Um, but there we go. Um, mental health needs, and then later on we had um, relationship goals. I've joined a little line connecting these two. Um, so yeah, taking the time to look after yourself, taking your time to kind of, for me, this is just me like getting out my crazy, getting out my rambles, um, kind of processing some thoughts that I have. Um, so this, this is the nice little mental health thing for me, but I definitely, I have the sads, um, quite a bit at the moment where just, I feel like I haven't achieved anything during this time. It has been, 15, 16 weeks, I think, at the very least. And I have done literally nothing. I cannot think of a single achievement that I have done during this time. And not, I can't even, the problem that I have is I can't think of a specific achievement that I want to aim for. Like if there was one thing that was like, I want to get buff, then I could do that. But I don't, like there's nothing, there's nothing in my head that is like, I really want to do that. There's like about 40 things where I'm like, eh, I kind of want to write on my D&D character and I kind of want to make a dress and I, maybe I'll look at mortgages <laughs> um, and maybe I'll read like a bunch of books or maybe I'll do this and nothing is like springing up with something I want to do and I really I just I dread the prospect of going back to work after all this time and people saying oh what all did you do during lockdown and me being like I sat at home so yeah I I think I need to find a new way of processing that um and working on what's going on in terms of it's also linked up with like planning um and I am a very bad planner I have I envy I truly truly envy people with real defined goals and aspirations um people with dreams because I've never been that person and if I had one thing that I was working towards um that I was really excited about and I know that I wanted to do it then I think I would be more organized and I would do it but as it is I don't really have that which is a personal thing that if it works out, then I work it out, then yay. Um, 
but until that point happens, that won't happen. And I've been talking for nearly 20 minutes, and I'm only like halfway through. What is wrong with me? Um, Gamer Girl, the game. I have not heard anything about it until it got brought up as a question on Trisha's chat, Twitches? Uh, on Trisha's uh, AMA, um, and I think that sounds disgusting and horrifying, not only as a girl who streams, um, although I'm not on the level of a professional, um, because it seems manipulative and controlling and gross, um, but it also as a mod, as someone who actively mods, um, I hate the assertion that you have that much power over someone else and that you can manipulate that power to nasty means. It's something that I really... I... I, I hate when people tell me what to do um, outside of, like, my boss telling me what to do or my mum, who, whose house I currently live in, um, telling me to do something. I I don't mind that, um, but there's very few other situations where anyone telling me to do something is, like, like asking. Um, anyway, I, I feel like not having control over your actions is feels dirty and horrible and nasty and I don't like it. Um, so the idea that mods have that much control over the creator is dirty and horrible and I hate it. Um, I really enjoy modding, I love modding, and the fact that this game is kind of casting aspersions over mods makes me really really sad because honestly I love hanging out in like Trisha's community and just chatting and hanging out or hanging out with my friends in their Twitch streams um, whom I happen to mod for too um, and the like I I hate that the game is either a yes I can I can make you suffer or yes I can control I can control your chat and make you like me um like those are both horrible things to be associated with being a mod because I don't want to be either of those things um and then equally it's horrible for a gamer person to then be like this person is clearly manipulating me from behind the scenes icky it's just icky and it feels horrible and I've done a little grumpy face with the tongue stuck out like Ugh. um on <laughs> my notes just just a it, 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 it's an, it sounds like a nasty game. Like, I like the idea of raising awareness. Um, and I feel like, you know, choosing mods is something that it's very important um, to choose mods that have the right sort of feel for your community and who you are. Um, but at the point where any mod is taking liberties, that's the point where you've got to be like, you're clearly not here for the right reasons. Um, and equally, most mods are here for the right reasons. Anyway. Moving on. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Trisha was saying that in terms of emotionally opening up, it's a very challenging thing um, for her because she's so openly optimistic and keeps moving. Um, I feel like I'm naturally quite introspective, um, but like when it comes to like a professional person, I put on my face. Like at work, I put on my professional face and I'm professional. Like um, there was a rule in my old, like in my first job, it was like that was customer service training, like what's going on outside does not come into work. Um, and if you can't put that aside, then don't come into work. Like if you don't have whatever's going on is affecting you in such a way that you can't do your work, then you shouldn't be in work. Um, and if you need to call in sick, then you need to call in sick. Um, which I'm not explaining that in the best way, it wasn't quite that like on the nose, but the idea that you leave your problems home when you're at work, you're a professional, um, it's something that's really stuck with me. Um, so if I'm at work, hopefully, hopefully I can get through the day. If I'm really, really miserable, I can get through the day without people knowing. Um, if I'm really, really happy, then I can get through the day making things at the same level of positivity as if I'm having a bad day. Um, but generally I'm naturally quite introspective and quite inwardly thinking. Um, and I'm often thinking about how not good I am, um, which, you know, isn't that great. Uh, but then I do find one of my coping mechanisms, which is something I've had since early secondary school, is I tend to vocalise exactly how I'm feeling, but in a very non-emotive way. Um, I'm bluntly honest. Like, if I'm having a bad day, um, then I will say to a colleague, um, by the way, just to let you know, I'm feeling really shitty today. Um, well, I won't use the word shitty at work because that's, that's not what I do. But I'd, I'd say to my colleague, I'm having, like, I, I'm feeling really tired today. I've got a horrible headache and just everything seems a bit bleh. 
Um, and the moment I've said that, then hopefully, again, shouldn't affect my work in any way. Um, but because I've vocalised it, it's got some of it out and kind of watered down how I actually feel. Um, so that if, like, it kind of, it's put it into a kind of verbalised perspective, so it's not an emotional perspective anymore. And that's something I kind of, <laughs> I learned from Marvin the Paranoid Android from uh, Hitch's Guide to the Galaxy when he's like, I'd like you to know I'm feeling very depressed. Um, and that's something I started doing in school where I was like, you know what, I'm feeling sad. And people would be like, okay. Because like it didn't come off as, I'll be like, I'm feeling really sad today is like what my, what I do, um, which sounds really schizophrenic when I say it out loud. Oh, this is gonna be a rambles, first take, one take, mistakes. Um, but yes, I, I feel like I, once I vocalise something, um, then I feel like it kind of loses its power over me a little bit um, and I can move on a little bit easier or at least process it in a different way. Um, da, 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 da. D and D, D and D is amazing. And it, that's a great way of getting through your emotions or unpacking your emotions in a really different way. Uh, one of my first characters, Nyla, I never, I haven't had a full campaign with her. Um, and I realised when I was writing her um, for a different campaign, used her for one campaign, it was just all battles. Used her for a second campaign, um, and I rewrote and like adjusted the story to fit to the um, to the world. And I realised how much of that character was like my heart and soul. And I then that campaign died, and I never got to finish with that character. And I feel like I haven't resolved my personal issues that I was hoping to resolve with that character. Well. Um, Tisa, a character that I played with, like I'd be happy. Like if I do go back to her, I'm only doing it with the current DM because he did an amazing, amazing job with that character um, in terms of building up her world and like changing her worldview. Um, but like that character, I built in a very specific way to um, kind of deal with some stuff that I was thinking about and obviously it's fantasy and escapism but it was a very interesting way of dealing with a lot of those kind of issues um and I find D&D &D very therapeutic in that way um how to find a D&D &D group I got incredibly lucky I googled and like literally two miles up the road there was a league of D&D &D players which at the time was about 15 20 people ran out of the back of a pub um and then now it's over 70 people um and what happens is we do every three to four months we have a voting system where um potential dms can um write a pitch so it'll be like a story snippet what system they're playing so it's not just D, D. there's world of darkness all sorts um snippet of their story system levels number of players um and then gosh knows how the guild master does it gavin is amazing um like they will everyone then gets to vote on their like they get to rate all the pitches um, from most wanted to play to least wanted to play and usually people end up with their first or second choice which is amazing um, uh, and then you get put into that group for however many weeks that block is running and then if the DM wants to run a longer campaign they can pitch for a second or a third block um, and it goes around like that so that means you get to play lots of different games with lots of different people so if you start a game and it's not working out then you've only got four weeks with that four or five weeks or oh, something more than that like eight to ten weeks with that dm and those people and then you can move on um if you're really loving it though if the dm re-pitches then you can carry on playing with that group and it, it's, it's an incredibly lucky amazing system um and i played with several dms within that group and um, our current group we've been playing together for like three years two at least two years at least two years because um i ran a campaign that turned into a three-parter so that was three blocks so that's like eight to twelve months um and then another dm jumped in and he did a two or three block campaign and then i've jumped in to do a two three block campaign and we've kind of we've switched watched and it's been lovely also because sometimes between campaigns we'll let players do like a um a couple of weeks of like practice dming and it, it, it's just it's a wonderful place um and i'm so lucky to be living in that and i don't know whether or not anything else like, like that exists but i got so lucky and i just emailed the guild leader i found the email like five years ago it was, it was like during the first block of Critical Role campaign one, um, around, I think it was around Halloween. So I think it was coming up to like the Briarwood arc. And I found the email that I sent to the Guildmaster to be like, hi, I kind of always want to play D&D. &D. Um, 
I don't know how to play the ball books, and uh, if anyone can help me play, that would be great. And I remember like nearly crying in the pub on the first day there because um, the the DM was already running a pre existing campaign. Um, and he said, oh, yeah, you can join in. Just write your character and then you could join in. And I got the book in front of me and I was like, <laughs> it's so much information. Um, and then fortunately, because at that point so many people were joining, like five people at the time, whatever, um, they then started a new B group. And my what I actually call my first DM was the one for that group who ran a block for just a bunch of newbies. Um, and it was lovely. And he was like, this is how you do this. And I was like, oh, it's amazing. Anyway, um, do, 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 do. trolls, other badness, um, spam the naked truth, etc, etc. I missed the naked truth this week. I was away this weekend to hang out with my sister. This is nearly 30 minutes long. I'm sorry. This is definitely, I gave the warning this is going to be a podcast. View it as a podcast. Um, uh, I was away this weekend. I went away with my sisters and we did an Airbnb in like a mobile home in the middle of a field. Um, and it was all above board and legal and all that jazz um uh so i missed the spam in the naked truth i'm sorry i didn't watch it live um i'm sorry that the spammers there seems to be a lot of spammers at the moment i've had to ban like three people from my server and from my twitch stream lately because of spamming um and then in my discord for the first time we had like some like it was clearly some edgy kid wanting to be banned who just came in and started spewing racial hate like just spam 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 all the worst of things i didn't actually see it my mods got there before i did and thank you to the mods um but like that's crazy um and like trisha was saying that she received like a home phone call which is just horrible like that is traumatizing um and the worst thing ever and that sucks um i don't know what it is with trolls this week don't know what it is um da -da 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 -da. Uh, more move to New Zealand. Move to New Zealand. Like I, like honestly, I wouldn't blame you for moving to New Zealand. America looks like it's on fire right now, and I know England is not better. It is not that much better. Um, but yeah, I think we all want to move to New Zealand, don't we? I really want to move to New Zealand. New Zealand seems to have it down pat. I mean, I'm sure there's problems in New Zealand. Grass is always greener. Um, and I'm sure it's going to have a mass migratory thing happening <laughs> towards the end of COVID where everyone's like, let's move to New Zealand. Um, but yeah, I, I heesh, heesh. Um, traveling for work, I've never had to do that. Apart from the hour and a half long commute, the fittest I've ever been was when I was biking 18 miles a day to get in and out of work. Oh, that was rough. Um, uh, when it comes to... Um, uh, relationships, relationship goals, you know relationship goals. I love that you guys are forward thinking, both planners, both um, reasonable adults who are willing to take advice from outside sources when difficulties arise, which is something that is amazing and wonderful. Um, and more power to you guys. Um, one of the deal breakers for me is not the necessarily the planning part of it because, as I said, I'm a floater. I just kind of drift around doing what I want and I think someone telling me what to do would irk me. Um, but I suppose if they explained it as this is for me, then I'd be like, okay, cool, just be aware that I'm still going to be late every single time. Um, don't be mean to waiters. Like, if you're actively mean then get out. I'm not. That's a no. That's a deal breaker. Like, if you're going to be mean to waiters or, like, scoff at waiters or restaurant people for being late, then it's just not going to happen. Just never. Never. It's a big no-no. Um, simps. I hate the term simps. I think it's ridiculous because I am a big follower of Trish. I regularly chat about her. I do these. I am in the Discord quite a lot of the time. Um, I raid whenever I can. And at the moment, I'm catching a lot of streams because I'm not at work, which is amazing, and I love it, and it's really nice. Um, but I do not, in any way, want to sleep with Trisha. And I've been called a simp. I've been called a Trisha simp. It was in the, the um, uh, Twitch gaming announcements thing, where she was on the Twitch front page, or the Twitch... She was playing the game with the cute little monkey thing. Um, and I was like, oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, because, you know, people should be able to stand up for other people um, without it being a bad thing. Unless, specifically, the person who is the one being targeted has said, look, I can look after myself. If that person has said, I can look after myself, 
don't interfere, then obviously don't. But if that person is being attacked or being harassed or being abused or you're just being a crappy person in their space, regardless if it's directed at them, then you defending them or defending someone else should never be viewed as a bad thing. Like white knighting, I think we discussed the white knighting on a while back. I'll have to really watch my naked truth on white knighting. Um, I think white knighting, white knighting, if it's for a goal, if it's for a goal of like, haha, I'm like going back to um, the gamer girl thing. If it's a, a manipulation of like, haha, if they do this, then they owe me more. <laughs> then that's bad. But like, most people don't think like that. And let's be honest, no one is going to sleep with you because you said nice things about the internet, about them on the internet, while people were being shits to you on the internet. That's just not how it works. <laughs> I like how life works. Um, so yeah. Anywho. Um, da, 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 techie fams. I don't know where that came from. Something to do with being a, a techie doodle or not a techie doodle. I don't know. I can't remember. Um, reading kits. My handwriting was awful. Clearly, I was losing concentration by this point, or maybe I was drinking. Who knows? Reading slash listening. Reading slash. Oh, so the the reading slash listening. God, this. I'm nearly this this response is nearly as long as Trisha's Naked Truth and I'm not even talking to people, I'm just talking to myself. So it's ridiculous. Um reading slash listening as um media experiences. Um I've never d read an audiobook. Um I had tapes as a kid. Um I had Harry Potter um one and two and three, I think, on tape. I had two Terry Pratchett's on tape, and I had Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, so Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy was a, as the original radio play, not as the book. It was as the original radio play, um, and I don't think I've, I think I've read the book once or twice. Um, not as much as I would like. Harry Potter unedited um, was how I first read Harry Potter. That's how I read Harry Potter the first time. I was too scared to read it, so I listened to it, um, and that's what got me into Harry Potter. Um, <laughs> And Terry Pratchett. I found Terry Pratchett very confusing because it is an existential world. So having that to get into it was very good. But since that age, I haven't done audiobooks. Um, I think it does come down to the narrator. Um, obviously, Stephen Fry is the narrator for Harry Potter. It's brilliant. Um, but I feel like it does come down to the narrator. And for me, an experience of reading is very internal and having my own internal voice read it is very different to having a voice read it to me. Um, but I'd be willing to try doing audiobooks. Um, I feel like the way that I do audiobooks is to watch the D&D streams that I watch because frankly, that is such a huge amount of content. Like, I'm so far behind Critical Role. I'm starting to crack my way through season uh, for campaign two, which I'm so behind on. Um, but like Twitch streaming and Twitch storytelling of D&D &D is just such a huge amount of content that my audiobook time is Critical Role and D&D &D online, um, which is such an interesting collaborative storytelling device. Um, while when I'm reading, I'm reading, it's my quiet time. Um, I think it's very, very different experiences. Anyway, I've been talking for 38 minutes, so that's more than enough. Uh, congratulations to anyone who got to the end of this. This is, um, first take, one take, that's the rule. My hair is nearly dry on top. Look at that. Nearly dry on top, still wet at the bottom. Um, you kind of can see the purple a little bit now. Um, I genuinely don't know if in all of these words that I have spewed out my mouth, if I've said a word of anything interesting, useful, helpful, or other. Um, and as I say, I do these for me, um, I'm, if anyone does watch this, yay, if Trisha does watch this, yay, um, I don't know if anyone else responds to these anymore, I don't know, um, but for me, it's so much a part of my YouTube vocabulary, because first take, one takes, no makeup, wet hair, um, is, it's something that is like 99.9% .9 of my content on YouTube is that. 99% of the person that I project is that. Um, and so 
these make sense to me. They're, they're easy for me to do. They get out the crazy, they get out the conversation. It means that I'm not lumbering my household with just all of the thoughts in my brain and a lot of the subjects which they don't necessarily care about. Like, in order to have a conversation about simp culture and gamer girl and mental health needs with people in my household would involve 45 minutes per subject explaining what they are and what they mean and how they relate. Well, with this, I can just be like, these are my thoughts. If you know what they are, relate and chat and comment and whatnot. And if not, so be it. Um, but I'm not going to stop doing these. As long as Trisha's doing them, I'm going to continue responding to them because they make sense to me. Um, and I have talked for way too much. Thank you for hanging out. Feel free to comment. Um, and yeah, sorry, it's so long. Um, I, there's probably very important things that I wanted to say in this spiel when I first watched Trisha's video, but I haven't. So I will work out what I missed on another day. In the meantime, have a good one. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others. Support your friends where you can contact your friends as much as possible. Um, I have definitely not been doing that because I find it like I cocoon inside myself when I'm feeling stressed. Um, so I haven't been reaching out to my friends as much as I ought to. Um, I haven't been responding as much as I ought to to various forms of conversations uh, because I just found myself being like, I hide away from people because I am not a social bunny. Anyway, enough talking, finishing the video. Thank you for watching and...